Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here and welcome to the channel. Three out of nine GMs in Germany are still unbeaten. And with two of them facing each other, is this still going to be the case after today? This man is the last one standing because he's up against Magnus. A Magnus is going stronger than strong. I don't even need to look at the historical games to know what Maxim is going to go for. If you see on E4, Maxim is like a one-trick pony. You will see the Sicilian, no doubt about that. Even when Magnus went for the Red Sea, what do you think Maxim did? C5. This was their opening last year in the same tournament, which also led to the sugar taught Sicilian. In Bill last year, we also saw another Sicilian with Maxim steering the game into the night off. Given that Magnus only lost one game in the last 15 times they played, Maxim on a good day still has what it takes to terminate Magnus's unbeaten record. I know some of you complained there is little analysis in some of the games, and it seems I would never be able to please you all. When I did provide some deep analytical lines, some of you said they are too deep and complicated and sometimes even confusing. I am here only to help. If you want deep analysis, you will have to be able to take it. But in either case, you do need to speak out. When many of you said the green board is much better than other colors, this is what I'm using now. Okay, let's come back to where the action is. In my previous video, I've already consulted my crystal ball and passed on the title to Magnus. Both Magnus and Maxim are going to play only for one result. The other person who's unbeaten or remains unbeaten is this guy who's up against Levon. And this game too should be of interest. If Magnus loses and Fabi wins, the two will have the same points. But even with this, who wins in the end? If we consult the rules, in case of a tiebreak, it's all down to the number of wins. And if the players have the same number of wins, it will go to the player with the largest number of wins of the black pieces. And if that is equal, there is a head-to-head -head score. And if that is equal to, we will see a two-game match of 10 minutes plus two seconds per move. And then if need be, another two games of five plus two. And if you don't go anywhere with that, we will see an again. Given Magnus loses today, and given Fabi wins this game, Magnus has in total five wins and Fabi only four. And that tells you where we stand. So today's game is not about the title, but pride. Magnus White most definitely is going to go for an E4 opening. But don't put it past him if he comes up with Knight F3 or C4. Being able to play any opening, do expect anything. So we do have a start. It's in English. And I'm sure this is not to avoid the Sicilian because... What if Maxim goes for c5? And he does. And this game can transpose into any Sicilian line. g3, g6, bishop g2, bishop g7, knight c3, and knight c6. And so far we have a perfectly symmetrical structure. And since the two queen side knights are out, we're also having the two knights symmetrical English. Magnus chose to develop his other knight. And this may be a good idea for Maxim to develop his own knight. Not to f6, but here. And then the idea is to get him to reposition into f5. Okay, not a knight move just yet, but this. And when Magnus castled, expect either e6, knight f6, or even a6. Okay, scrap that. None of these moves were executed. Bishop f5 going for an early bishop exit. And I think the idea here is to try and get the knight to go for b4 and then go after the rook. 
but this is line sound. This is how Magnus answers, and do expect, against any response, the bishop to get attacked. Maxim got the opportunity to develop the other knight, but look at how both players are quite reserved. There is no attempt to occupy the center, but slowly, slowly, this will change. You can even expect d4, but is Magnus going to go for this? Nope, he went for this instead, cutting off or cutting out the bishop from all the action. But this move to d3 does allow Maxim to go for an extra move, if you like, and this is how Maxim responds. I may be surprised a bit to see that d3 pushed by Magnus. Why not d4? But we are talking about Magnus after all, so I'm sure he knows what he wants to do far better than anyone else. What can Magnus go for here? He can attack the bishop on f5. If he wants, there is a3 to stop the knight. And what else is there? e4 using another avenue to go after the bishop. But e4 using another avenue to go after the bishop may look okay, but it is in fact never recommended because white is going to bury his own bishop, rendering him quite inactive. Magnus finally comes up with a response, and this is what he does. And now it's Maxime who's bending up his time. There is h6, there is rook e8, or even much better, something else. This move, queen c8, to force white to react because of h3. But with Maxime being very skeptical, it has been over 12 minutes and he's yet to come up with something. 30 minutes and 31 seconds later, this is what he goes for. And right after this queen responds by Magnus, who's looking at an entry right into h6. How do you think Maxim reacts? He goes for this offering a pawn in fact. So what does he have in mind? Let's find out. Takes, takes and takes. Got the queen right into a5. If Maxime had all this planned, why burn another 13 and a half minutes of his time? Has something misfired here or has he miscalculated? Magnus can easily trade the queens and if he doesn't fancy that, he can still cover for the knight with a4. But then again, this will not be saving the queen. But Mr. Magnus does not want the queens off and goes for the only response to preserve her. He backed off the knight when I mean, the rook was summoned in to attack this pawn, which is not really attacking because the queen has his back. This is how Magnus responds. Rook c8 led to this pawn push, and I really don't know what is going on. One thing you can feel is a tension. But is it time for the queen on a5 to find a better spot? Maxim came in full throttle. He shot off with this guy, and why not? He clearly wants to win this game, just like anyone who tried before him. But no one was able to get there in the end. Is this game going to be any different today? And the good thing about this is that we don't have to wait that long to find out. In the meantime, we do have a result in the family Levon game. And also we have another result in the game between Vichy and Peter Svetler. I'm not going to spoil it for those who don't want to know. Back to our game. Carlsen ignores his e5 initiative and still goes for the bishop on h6. And the idea is that if you trade queen d8 and this attack on the bishop, once the bishop backs off, knight d2, queen f8. Whether the queens come off or not, but let's get them off anyway. There is knight c4, knight back to cover, and if anything, black will be playing catch up because of the full pawn deficit he has. But right after the bishop on h6 was challenged, Maxime got the knight to invade into this spot, and when Magnus removed the bishop, 
rather than remove the bishop first, Maxime rams this knight off the board first. And there is a reason here. Can you see? If you take with the bishop, this bishop on g7 also comes off. And once the bishop retreats here, black still is going to have to fight very hard just to be able to be in the game. So that pawn sack on the queen's side doesn't seem to have given Maxim any real advantage. But if we come back to this position, right after the knight removed this knight from f3, Magnus didn't use the bishop to capture, but the pawn, and when this bishop on g7 was arrested, how does this board position look to you? In either case, Magnus is up by a full pawn. His position doesn't look bad. And there is nothing going to stop him from looking for yet another win. F4 got the queen to back off. But do we know why? Why move the queen from where she was to this new location? Was his anticipation of protecting this guy on d6 in a likely attempt to prevent the queens from coming off if knight e4 maybe maybe not takes takes a knight to the rim got the knight to back off and magnus is going to do everything in his power to sustain his advantage this guy on d3 is wide open for the taking so is there anything wrong if you ram him, there is in fact, and this is why the knight moved here to a4. Queen takes, for example, queen takes, and bishop takes, will get this guy from c5 to come off. And this is your answer. And white is still up, and now this bishop is under fire too. So coming back, this is how Carlson decides to do things. He lifted the rook here. And when Maxime also lifted his own rook right into b4, Magnus attacks his bishop. Bishop back, knight takes, knight takes, rook takes, and nothing else but can you see something here that might do? This is what Maxime does, and the position now intensifies. Magnus may have rushed here. He traded the rooks, but even with this line of play, is still able to manage to keep that one pawn surplus. And this is what he's playing for. Maxim is the last man standing. But is he able to stop or stand up long enough when he decides to part with that pawn? Magnus is like the Punisher. Go for something that does not seem right. And he's going to have the answer ready. Let's see how things go from this point on. Magnus followed up with this attack on the bishop. And Maxim is trying to take advantage of this. What he did was to remove d3, creating a nice attack on the queen. But even with this nice and attractive attack, Carlsen went on to pin the rook. Bishop e6, getting him out of danger. Got Magnus to remove this guy with a check. And when the king reached the back rank, rook b1, getting ready for the kill. Not much you can do here other than protect the back rank, and this is exactly what Maxime goes for. Rook b8, forcing the exchange with a check. Got the king to come forward, and look at how Magnus gets to even cover his only pawn surplus. Can you figure out what he does? This move. And when the bishops came off, queen e5 check. And when the queen was attacked, they came this bishop off too. And a2 is still protected. h5 takes, takes. And Maxime can only be playing for a draw, but Magnus is looking for a different type of ending. A check, king g6. A4, and this queen responds, trying to find a way to go for a perpetual. Got Magnus to come in with this perfect answer. This is what he did. 
And when Maxim replied with this, A5, and this looks like the last man standing is standing no more. F4 got Magnus to go for a very bold king move. And when Maxim responded with this king move, Queen F5, and still Maxim has no way to even check the king. Queen C4 got the king to march forward. And this was also the very last move in the game, leading to another Magnus win. This was yet another superb performance by Magnus, who, irrespective of the end result today, he's now confirmed at least, officially confirmed, as the winner of this very prestigious chess tournament in the largest, or shall I say, most populous country in the EU. In short, Magnus is still undefeated, and anyone who's trying to knock him down, this attempt is met with failure. Is it by chance he's the reigning world champion? It seems no one is even able to challenge him. He ends his tournament with seven and a half points out of nine and one and a half point ahead of Fabi, the world's number two. Let's see who's next and how long it would take really before Carlson loses a game. Hope you enjoyed in the meantime. So until next time, this was your chess puzzler.